Hi, my name is Maz, and ever since I was a child, I think I've been ashamed of my brown skin. Now, I'd been wanting to talk about this for so long. Not only had I been tinkering away with this script for over a year, but then I sat on it, saying that I'd release it next month, and then next month, and then next month, and then next month, until another year had passed into 2020. So to say that it's been difficult to share this story or part of myself is a pretty huge understatement. A part of it has to do with the fact that I'm not the type to discuss serious topics on this channel, you know? I love making you guys laugh, and it's an absolute joy to do that. But I guess that's also made me afraid of expressing my own deep-rooted insecurities. So yeah, this video is going to be a little different, but it's something that I want to make for myself first. And if it helps anybody else along the way, then awesome. So strap in, put on your boots, and let's take a trip down racism memory lane. Ah, the beginning. February 10th, 1997. On this exact date, a small, mozzy chocolate boy pops into the world, ready to take it on head first. My parents then raised me in Pakistan for the first year or so, following the Islamic traditions that they were accustomed to, and after a year and a bit, headed on over straight to Japan. It was mainly to get the best quality of life for their new family, because by this time, I also had a little brother. Before I showed him some brotherly love. So after spending a few years there and having a good old time with Japanese culture, my parents then decided to go to New Zealand for more opportunities. Some of my fondest memories are of my primary school years, where I'm having fun, drawing, and goofing off as a young naive kid. So once I graduated from primary school, I headed off to intermediate, which is a fancy way of saying middle school. When I got there though, the first thing that I noticed was that the teacher was really harsh to me. And I mean only me. It was almost like a movie cliche, because she ended up not picking me for any of the answers, finding any excuse to punish me, and handing out detentions for the smallest reasons that she could think of. Now, at the time, whilst I knew English, I was still new to the country, and I definitely had an accent. And I thought maybe it could have been that, like she didn't understand what I was saying? Or maybe I did something by accident that made her view me negatively, or said something I shouldn't have? Surely, an adult wouldn't pick on a kid without a solid reason, right? It wasn't until much later that I learned that she had supposedly lost people during the September 11 attacks. And of course I can understand the bitter feelings and resentment that may arise from that. It's a horrific incident that traumatized so many people and definitely impacted the world. But even when knowing all that, it still didn't make life easier for the 10-year-old boy just trying to go to school. I was just sitting there trying to be the best student that I could be. I did my homework, I paid attention in class, I got excellent grades, so why was she being so mean to me? I didn't understand how an incident so far away in another country affected me, a 10-year-old child just trying to do my best. After that year, we then moved to rural, out in the middle of nowhere, Australia, with a very few people of color, and the brownest things out there were the kangaroos. This was such a fresh start, I'm sure things will pick up from here. <laughs> well, I definitely crossed my fingers and hoped so, but with my faith and color of my skin, I couldn't help but stand out from the crowd. I was the butt of all the jokes, and I could tell from day one that I did not belong here. But I wasn't gonna take it all lying down. I know I'm a Pakistani Muslim, and I refuse to be an outcast because of it. So I started to poke fun of myself as well. Whoa, hey, watch out guys. Don't make me call my uncle. Wait, 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 are you eating pig, bro? Eh? Guys, if you piss me off, I'll blow you up. Yikes. And it actually got so bad that a friend of mine within my squad at the time asked, Hey dude, why are you constantly making fun of yourself? You're doing it more than us at this point. And I answered without any irony or emotional attachment, because if I do it first, nobody else can hurt me. And I remember saying that so matter-of-factly, as if it was only natural. And it's only now that I realize how problematic that was. How much self-hate that I had been harboring for my own culture religion, and myself. It's not to say that joking about these topics is forbidden or anything, because I still do it from time to time. However, once you keep hearing all these negative points about your cultural roots, your faith, and your people over and over and over, you slowly start to believe them, to start hating yourself on an intrinsic level, wishing that you belonged somewhere. 
And all of that is perfectly encapsulated within a letter that I wrote myself all those years ago. Now, to provide context to middle school Mars, this is how I looked. Now, I'm not gonna roast my younger self this time, but I think objectively, you can see that there's a lot that I could have worked on. I had pretty messed up teeth, I wore really oversized clothes, and my glasses were a little out of fashion. But back then, when I asked myself, what is the one thing you wish you could change? I looked in the mirror with all of the flaws that I had just listed and answered my skin color. That still gets me to this day. I was in middle school, puberty, emotions, and hormones getting me confused about everything. And that's the biggest issue that I could find about myself. Something that I had absolutely no control over. And as the years kept going, I got more and more accustomed to the jokes and comments and developed my humor as a defense mechanism. So when I do get hit with the brunt of it, I can laugh it off, shrug my shoulders, and then dish it back with confidence, all without resolving anything. At least this charade was helping me in drama class, where it was all about putting on an act. And honestly, with how much media and drama I was doing, watching all these content creators, seeing how it all worked behind the scenes, it was so mesmerizing to me. And in that excitement, I walked up to my drama teacher, related all to him, to which he replied, remember that people won't like you because you're brown. He said in a joking manner, pointing out how few South Asian people there were in Hollywood and how they were typecast in a negative way. But I actually agreed with his point. Because even now, if he would ask me to list off as many South Asian or brown people in media, Aziz Ansari, Priyanka Chopra, Dave Patel, Kumail Nanjiani, Hassan Minhaj, and I had to rack my brain to think of them when I was writing this script. Even with cartoons in which you can draw anything you want. Who could I look up to? What, Aladdin? Apu? Baojit from Phineas and Ferb? This is what they thought of South Asian characters? Because no matter how well written they are, is that really the best that could be done to represent our culture? Really? What a yikes. And it may seem like a small thing to some of you guys, but it all comes together to reinforce a consistent message to people like me. You don't belong anywhere. You are the villain, and people hate you for who you are. And you will always, always be an outcast. And that has been an ongoing issue that has popped up again and again and again in my life. I have never felt like I belong anywhere. Even now, I still struggle to identify with others. So when I would be hanging out with my Western friends, we'd be having a good old time, you know, sharing jokes and carrying the banner and all that. But then they decide to go to a bar to crack open a cold one, and then wham! I get a harsh reminder that I'm different. And whenever I'm with my Muslim friends, I'd have a great time, but some of the cultural aspects of being Pakistani was lost, and the time that I had spent living in a Western environment had instilled a more liberal view towards things. So I felt like I didn't belong there either. And that's why I always get so, so excited whenever there's a prominent Muslim creator online. Because we're just such a rare breed that I almost break all social etiquette to contact them and say, Excuse me? You are really cool. Uh, thanks? <laughs> Weirdo. I know it might sound sad, but I've had to embrace the fact that I am different. I mean, I'd gone through so many schools, having experienced the same motions and insults over and over and over again that it was the only natural conclusion. It wasn't even chipping away or thickening my skin at this point, because to me, it was now commonplace. Something that I didn't really recognize as wrong for a very long time. And it got to a point where when something really awful happened, I would reflexively immediately joke about it. For example, there's a moment that happened a few years ago that I can't help but keep coming back to. I was seeing a middle-aged man as part of a routine medical checkup, and I told him that I was going to take his blood pressure. As is custom, I asked for his consent, which he said yes to, and I approached him. He then smiled, looked at me, and said, Yeah, sure, as long as you don't blow up the clinic. And I, without skipping a beat, replied back, Listen, mate, if you hear me speak Arabic, you'll know what's happening. That response caused him to start bellowing with laughter, all the whilst my supervising doctor sat behind me, wide-eyed, unsure of what just happened. And I stood there, smiling kindly, but also deeply uncomfortable. 
I think about this incident quite often, replaying it over and over in my head to see what I could have done differently. Because what he said to a medical professional who was trying to help him is definitely not okay. And I think most people would agree that it was at least racially insensitive. But this is where it starts getting gray. Would showing that I had a good sense of humor be better in the end? As he'll walk away thinking more positively about Muslims and brown people in general? Or would it simply reinforce the fact that it's okay to make those remarks? Or should I have stood my ground and pointed out that it was not okay? Because yes, you would have set the record straight, but I'm on placement. And I can't just sternly tell off patients like that in front of my supervising doctor. And like, if I do react negatively, would it make him think even less of Muslims as a result? I don't know. I just don't know. I've been dealt whatever cards in life, and I try my very best to make the right move. But sometimes it's so gray and muddled that I don't even know if I'm making the right decisions or sometimes even playing the right game. And this incident was recent, showing that the mindset has not changed that much from how it was in the past. Some of you guys have asked why I don't color in my character's skin, despite the fact that I color in almost everything else. Some people assume that it's to follow trends, or carry on the white-skinned animated character legacy. However, the actual reason is that I was genuinely afraid about how you guys would react to a brown creator. I mean, there's not very many of us, and in the times that we're living in at least, brown people have had very negative preconceptions attached to them. People look at us and judge in a certain way, you know? And I just didn't want to deal with that. But I also didn't want to lie to you guys, or grow the self-hate any bigger than it already was. So for my very first video, I made the decision not to color in anything, and chose a story that was specifically centered around the fact that I'm a brown Muslim. That way, I was revealing my race to you guys in a more subtle way. Because I genuinely am trying to be prouder of who I am as a person. I publicly try to take pride in the fact that I'm brown, I speak my native language as often as possible, and keep in touch with my spirituality the best I can. And look, most of the time, my stories are about what I've done or experienced in the past, which gives me insight into what I've learned, which I can then share with you guys as a moral. However, with this, it's something that I'm still working on, you know? An area where I'm always trying to improve. So, at least this time, I can't be a role model or impart any high and mighty wisdom to solve your issues. But I do hope that one day, I can get there. I can't promise you that I'm gonna recolor my character or become an advocate at every waking moment because I'm still working through this. And I'll learn from my experiences to hopefully eventually, love who I am 100%. So with all that in mind, allow me to reintroduce myself. Hi, my name is Maz, and I'm proud to be a Pakistani Australian Muslim. All right, so that was a very nerve-wracking video to make. <laughs> Thanks for making it this far. I appreciate it, and I hope that at least one of you guys found it useful in some way. If you've made it this far, then make sure to comment a brown heart, because that way I'll know that you've watched the entire video. Alright, laters, and stay amazing.